Magna Man. You know, for the longest time, I thought that um, Magna Man was usually the character that I started on. It was just my comfort zone. It worked for me, so I never questioned it. But um, one thing that's cool about Mega Man that I've come to accept in my adult years uh, is the versatility that you can play it in. And, you know, depending on how you play it, every experience is different. But if you stay in your comfort zone and you always tackle the Robot Masters at the same, in the same order, it's not going to be a different experience every time. You know, the, the magic is gone. I've always defaulted to the pea shooter and um the very very first time I played this game I started with Snake Man. I don't remember how I got this game all I remember is that I played it at Walmart which is how us children of the 90s and 80s experienced NES games for the first time was we played it on the display and you know it worked and I don't know why Nintendo doesn't advertise that way anymore because it is the most effective way to advertise a video game is to just let the public play it for free. I mean, every amazing Nintendo title that I've ever, that I can remember off the top of my head happened because people played it for free. Or they, they either, yeah, they played it for free either at the store or at someone else's house. Because that's what happened with Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers was nothing less than a phenomenon, and I don't know how it took off in the New York area, which is kind of the, it's ground zero for Nintendo's life in the United States, but after it left New York, I mean, people were either playing it inside of Toys R Us, or they were playing it at their best friend's house, and they're like, I got to have one of those. I mean, even my dad, who has never played video games since, and never played video games before that, went out and bought himself an NES. You know, the same thing happened with the Wii. Like, elderly people were going out and buying the Wii. You know, people who didn't know the first thing about something like Mega Man or Resident Evil, they only knew that Super Mario had a mustache and jumped on things. People like that were going out and buying the Wii. And it was because they played it for free somewhere. And then the media latched onto it and started saying, hey, the, the Nintendo Wii can actually make you healthier. It can be life-changing for elderly patients and all. Oh, life-changing for elderly citizens in nursing homes. It'll help them rehabilitate. I mean, and that's when it really took off after that, but it was already, the Wii was already a winning system at that point. You know, these things don't happen because of specifications. They don't happen because of third-party developers. They don't happen for any other reason except you just, you hit a home run and you put that home run into the hands of the customers, into the hands of the masses, and you let it do, it, let it do its thing. That's how you have a successful console. It's what worked for the NES. It's what made it successful for years after years after it was uh, launched. Nowadays consoles have what? Four to six years? How long did the Nintendo have? It had six to eight, I believe. I don't remember exactly what year it came out, but it was in the first half of the 80s. And it wasn't done until like 92. I mean that, come to think of it, it's close to a decade. So it was at least eight years that the Nintendo, the NES had a relevant standing in the marketplace. And Nintendo's missteps, because the Super Nintendo continued to be a success. I mean a 16-bit era, forget it man. You know, People are still arguing over who won the 16-bit wars. And I mean, that's saying something. It's pretty clear that um, Nintendo won in the grand scheme of things because Sonic was appearing on a Nintendo game and not vice versa. So Nintendo won in the grand scheme of things, but 
the Super Nintendo and the Genesis neck and neck. Still. And it was because people could play it for free. They had it set up in the stores. And slowly after that, I remember the last system you could really play in the stores, for the most part, was the N64. And the N64 started off strong, but by the end of the shelf life of N64, um, people just weren't really... People just weren't really playing it anymore. Or they, they, they weren't getting a chance to play with it in the stores anymore. I don't ever remember, well, I rarely remember playing um, a GameCube game in the stores. And I don't remember playing any of the last generation N64 games in stores. And that is when Nintendo fell off. I don't know whose side of the equation that fault lies, whether it was Nintendo for not wanting to let people experience their games or whether it's the stores for not wanting to devote the space for it. Either way, it was a huge mistake on whoever decided to stop doing that. That is what made the previous Nintendo system 